This video will show you a couple of data binding tricks in XAML for your Xamarin.Forms application. Um, I will be showing you three, maybe four, depending on how you count, um, tricks uh, that you didn't know about yet. At least one of them, I promise you. It's going to be about data binding modes. It's going to be about uh, string format. It's going to be about fallback values. So it's, it's a lot of good stuff, a lot of ground to cover. So let's check it out. So as usual here, you can see our Xamarin Forms new application, just a new template. Whenever you go into Visual Studio 2019 or Visual Studio for Mac 2019, and you just go like file new uh, forms application, then this is what you'll get. Um, I've already added one thing. So in our shared project right here in our solution, I've um, added a my binding object. This can be any object. Um, and I've just created a couple of um, you know properties that you uh, would normally encounter. So uh, I just have my regular string with this description, uh, which is for no reason it is have you subscribed to my channel yet? So you know maybe that's something that you want to take a minute and just do right now. Um, and I have an integer, which is some number. Uh, I have a double right here, and I have a string again, which is a image URL, and I've set that to null. So I've already specified a couple of values. Of course, typically whenever you work with this stuff, you will have your um, objects, and you will fill those from probably a REST service or uh, maybe something else. Uh, but you know it doesn't matter where this, these values come from, um, as long as they are there. And I'm just going to show you a couple of um, tricks with. Uh, these values coming from this object. I already also set um, in the main page uh, my binding context to this actual object. Uh, so again, typically you would maybe do this through a MVVM framework um, or, you know, I don't know, some other way uh, set your, your binding context. But what this does is for this entire main page, uh, it will set the uh, my binding object to be the scope of my page basically. So what I can do now is go into my main page here. I'm going to remove this label here. I don't really need that, but I will reuse the rest. Uh, of course, update our header as always. So uh, let's name this binding tricks. There we go. Save that. And with the power of hot reload, we already see our updates coming in here. Uh, so what I can do here, this label to start developing now, let's just bind this simply as you would usually do. Uh, so binding, and I can now say like, what properties did we have here in my binding object? Uh, so we had the description, let's do that one. So I can say description. Uh, there we go. And whenever I save that, it will um, show the description here, like the subscribing to my channel. Um, so, you know, that's that's how you would normally do the data binding. Nothing fancy. You just bind to a property value and that's it. So did you already know that this is basically a shorthand notation? Because actually you would have to write path is description. Um, so, you know, this, this describes the path to the thing that you're binding to. In this case, it, you can um, like not specify the my binding object because that is already set as a scope for the entire content page in our code behind. Um, but you can just leave the path out here and it will understand that you are trying to specify the path with this description. So this is the property name that you would um, typically use. So there's already your first trick basically. Boom, we got that in the pocket, uh, but that's not really a trick now, is it? So what did we have more? We also had like the sum number. Um, so with the sum number, we are not going to do anything um, um, special to you. We are just going to do that um, here as well. Uh, remove all this text. We are just going to say binding some number. Here we go. And uh, so you can see the number just shows up. So that's the thing, right? So you can basically have any kind of object because if you remember correctly, this is the int um, and not a string. So whenever you use that example, it will just call the to string on this property. So the sum number will be uh, uh, the sum number dot to string, and you will get the 42 here. So um, that is something uh, to remember. It will just convert everything um, into a string. So uh, you can overwrite the to string method uh, from your object if that's what you want. You could do it this way. So that's something that you might want to be aware of. So if we put in a comma here, so did you know you can put in a comma? 
comma here and you can specify some other things. Uh, so we already have like the converter and the converter parameter. I am showing you how to work with that in another video that should come up in your screen right now uh, or check out the links in the video description. Uh, so I'm not going to go into these yet, uh, but you can check out the other video and see how that works. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the, whoops, is the mode. So uh, here we have a mode and whenever I press enter here, we can see it has a couple of options. It has default, it has one time, one way, one way to source and two way. So the default is like the, um, the, the default one, as you might expect. And the default, so each property, and I, now I'm talking about the property of a label. So the things that you can actually bind something to. So in this case, it's the text has a default binding mode. Um, and the default binding mode can be any of these here below. Um, and it's specified by the uh, Xamarin Forms SDK. So um, it, for some properties, it will be uh, one way. For other properties, it will be two way. Um, I think for the most properties that you just want to set once, it's just one time, uh, one way, sorry. Um, so, you know, you can, you can check out whatever the default one is. And usually the default one is fine. You don't need to change it. Uh, but there are a couple of scenarios where you might want to change it. So the other options here, if I go from, from top to bottom, so one time um, is like it, it only reads the value one time. So whenever we look at to this example right here, uh, this sum number, um, it will only read it one time. So it will just uh, see it has the value of 42, put that in our label. And whenever we change the value of some number, it's not going to pick up on that because we just wanted the one time binding. Um, of course, whenever you do this, um, you want to maybe optimize your performance uh, because whenever it doesn't have to subscribe to like changes in the values, uh, you could just do one time and that helps you uh, gain a little bit of performance here. So, you know, whenever you know that value is not going to change, but you still want to use data binding, uh, just use this, this one time thing. So one way is not one time. So this will actually respond to uh, changes, but one way is like it's going from the source to the target. So this is going from the source, which is the sum number to the target, which is text. Uh, so only the changes in sum number will surface in text. Uh, whenever you implement the I notify property change things, of course, uh, everything that's needed for data binding and um, updating the values that needs to be in place. But whenever you do, whenever some number then is updated, that will show in the text property of this label. Or of course, if you're using it for the font size or for the image, source or whatever you're using it for, whenever you update and you do uh, one way, um, it will it will update. So you also have the other way around, which is one way to source. So maybe you have a entry control um, and you do not care about the value that is in some number, but you do want that entry to uh, put the um, value that you put in there um, in some number. So you have, let's actually, let's, let's type a little bit. So if we have this entry and we have a text as well, and we do that same binding here, there we go. And we do this, whoops, we do this and we set the mode to um, one way to source. Here we go. Oh, let's get this out of here because this is causing some issues. There we go. Uh, so here we have the entry and you can see it doesn't show the value, right? So it doesn't get it from some number. Um, so if I were to do this one way, it should show up. There we go. Here you see the value, right? And whenever I do one way to source, the only thing this will does is uh, whenever I change something here, um, it will put back into some number. So then you can go to your code, your business logic, and you can do something with the new value in some number. Um, but the, that value is not shown in the UI because it's going one way to source. And then finally, you have like the two way. So that basically does all the things. Um, so that actually, you, know, you can see that now my um, sum number is, is updated. Uh, so this is the actual value that it should be showing right now. Um, and you can see that whenever I um, add things here and um, I'm going to make a little change in XAML and I reload it again, um, you can see that, you know, the value does some updating. 
Um, I don't know why it doesn't update like the whole thing. It should do that because what two-way uh, does is like it updates both uh, whenever you change something in some number from your code, um, it will update the value in the UI. But what it will also do is um, uh, whenever I type something in this entry, it will also update the value in some number. So from the UI to the actual some number property. So this goes both ways. So basically your end user can change the value, uh, but you can also as the app developer can change the value from um, your code and, and reflect that to the user. So those are the different modes that you can um, you can use for data binding. And uh, like I said, usually the default one is fine, but you might come up with scenarios where you want to do um, other things. And now you know how to do that. So if we talk a little bit about the default one, um, if you have some like, like I think the entry text actually is a two way uh, default binding mode because you know, you want to, that is something that you want to update from the code behind and also want to be updatable from the user. So um, that might be two way by default. Um, actually, let's let's keep this in here for um, our example code. So you can find all the code uh, on my GitHub repository. It's linked in this uh, video um, video description. So here we go. Let's keep that in here. And the other thing I want to talk about is string format. So string format is really cool too. You probably know it if you have been um, coding for a longer time. Uh, so let's get this label. I'm going to copy that one. I don't want it to have like this big title and the padding is fine. Okay, so save that and we should have the subscription again. Uh, but I'm going to bind this one to some double. So here we go. And whenever we do that, we now know that um, this is just going to call the two string. So it just should show the double, right? Uh, but what if I want to turn this into an integer? So what I can use for that is the string format. And the string format is, you know, it just calls the two string. So you can also call the uh, string dot format basically on this. Um, so here you have to work with single quotes because else it will get confused with like the, the double quotes here. So single quotes, and then you can also like do uh, multiple values, but I'm going to show you this with just one value. So whoops, uh, you can you can specify it like this. And um, so this is going to be like the parameter null. So the first parameter that you put in here, which is going to be some double in this case. And then you put in the colon, and then you can specify what the string format should be. So if you want to have just one integer, um, you can just put another zero in here, and it will make it into an integer. Um, or you maybe want to also uh, show it uh, all, always with four digits. So you just put in uh, four zeros in here, and it will have a couple of leading zeros. So here you can see, or maybe you want to show just uh, one thing behind the, the comma. So um, here you go, and it just shows it with one uh, dot, and it, it rounds up the value. Um, or you just want to show the whole value as an actual uh, double again, and you can do that with this as well. So for the string format, there is a couple of builds in string formats that you can use. I will find the link and I will put it in the, the video description and show it on screen to you right now. Um, so, you know, you can also use this for uh, daytime formats, uh, for basically everything, numbers, whatever, you name it. Um, and you can apply the string format to your value right here to um, show it a little bit nicer to your user. So that is pretty cool, I think. Um, so one last thing that I want to talk about is the fallbacks. Um, actually, I'm going to, you know, um, do a little new thing here, put in an image and the source is what you want to be doing here. And I'm going to bind that, whoops, binding, uh, what did I call it again? So binding image URL, here you go. And that's a string, but you can see I set the value to null. And why I did that is going to be apparent in a little bit. So um, again, comma, and you can specify the target null value, which is really cool. So whenever I do this, no image is going to show up because you know, the image is null. So maybe that happens, maybe you get from your backend, a database field, which specifies null, and you still want to show some kind of fallback value. So this doesn't just work for images, it also works for uh, text or for whatever you want to. Uh, but what you can do is specify the target null value. And uh, what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to um, copy a little um, URL from uh, Wikipedia that I know from the top of my head, of course. So here we go. And what this does is uh, whenever the target value is null, so mind you, the, um, the target um, 
property is found. So it is actually on my binding object. So the image URL is there, but the value is set to null. Then it will apply this target null value. So whenever I save this now and it reloads, it will see that the target is null because image URL is null. And then you can have some kind of uh, fallback image in this case uh, that sets it to this question mark. So I can also do the same thing um, like this with a uh, another label here. So let's make this a label, then make this um, text. And then whenever I do this, um, no image found. Here we go. That should produce like, well, the same result, um, air quotes, but now it will say no image found, right? Um, so this is uh, the way that you uh, can overcome like some fallback value. Whenever there is a null value, you can uh, still show something nice to to your end user. And there's another one, um, which is basically a variant of this one. And that is the, whoops. Actually, let's take another image. Here we go. Uh, not this one. And this one, let's copy that one again. And you also have the fallback value. So that is whenever, you know, you might have some kind of inheritance of an object and uh, maybe a certain property might or might not be available in your um, in your binding context object. So, you know, if I have my binding object and I want to um, uh, maybe do a property that is called um, some other property and that property is not found um, in my binding object, right? So the way this binding works, that's also why you don't get IntelliSense for the actual properties, is that it will look into this object basically at runtime and it will try to see what properties are there or what isn't there. And uh, with the fallback value, you can uh, like see if that property uh, is not there at all. So that's different of it is there, but it has a null value. So if that property is not there at all, it will uh, do this fallback value. So if we save this again, we will see another question mark is coming up because it doesn't find this property at all, right? So that is a little bit different from uh, the target null value, but it kind of does the same thing for whenever no properties are there. So these things are always kind of hard to um, explain through this. I hope that you got something from it. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, I will make probably more videos about data binding and all this stuff because, you know, it's just a hard topic whenever you just start out. Um, I hope you found these tips and tricks useful um, and uh, happy data binding. Tell me honestly, did you know about any of these? One of these? All of them? If you knew about all of them, please let me know in the comments. You will get the um, Gerald sticker of expert Xamarin Forms magician. Um, if you didn't know about it, there's no shame in that because, you know, the data binding stuff is hard to get your head around when you're just getting started. Um, so let me know in the comments if you want to see any more videos about specific topics um, around data binding or MVVM. I'll be happy to explain anything to you. Um, also, like this video if you liked it. Um, subscribe to my channel so, you know, I have your support and I can keep going. Um, and other than that, I will hope to see you for my next video.